What I'm going to tell you is what I learned in secret briefings in the Vatican when I was a Jesuit priest under oath and induction. A Jesuit cardinal named Augustine B. showed us how desperately the Roman Catholics wanted Jerusalem at the end of the third century. Because of its religious history and its strategic location, the holy city was considered a priceless treasure. A scheme had to be developed to make Jerusalem a Roman Catholic city. The great untapped source of manpower that could do this job was the children of Ishmael. The poor Arabs fell victim to one of the most clever plans ever devised by the powers of darkness. Early Christians went everywhere with the gospel setting up small churches, but they met heavy opposition. Both the Jews and the Roman government persecuted the believers in Christ to stop their spread. But the Jews rebelled against Rome, and in 70 AD, Roman armies under General Titus smashed Jerusalem and destroyed the great Jewish temple which was the heart of Jewish worship in fulfillment of our Lord's prophecy in Matthew 24 2. On this holy place today where the temple once stood, the Dome of the Rock Mosque stands as Islam's second most holy place. Sweeping changes were in the wind. Corruption, apathy, greed, cruelty, perversion, and rebellion were eating at the Roman Empire and it was ready to collapse. The persecution against Christians was useless as they continued to lay down their lives for the gospel of Christ. The only way Satan could stop this thrust was to create a counterfeit Christian religion to destroy the work of God. The solution was in Rome. Their religion had come from ancient Babylon and all it needed was a facelift. This didn't happen overnight but began in the writings of the early church fathers It was through their writings that a new religion would take shape. The statue of Jupiter in Rome was eventually called St. Peter, and the statue of Venus was changed to the Virgin Mary. The site chosen for its headquarters was on one of the seven hills called Vaticanus, the place of the divine serpent, where the Sedanic temple of Janus stood. The great counterfeit religion was Roman Catholicism, called Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Revelation 17 5. She was raised up to block the gospel, slaughter the believers in Christ, establish religions, create wars, and make the nations drunk with the wine of her fornication, as we will see. Three major religions have one thing in common. Each has a holy place where they look for guidance. Roman Catholicism looks to the Vatican as the holy city. The Jews look to the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. And the Muslims look to Mecca as their holy city. Each group believes that they receive certain types of blessings for the rest of their lives for visiting their holy place. In the beginning, Arab visitors would bring gifts to the house of God and the keepers of the Kaaba were gracious to all who came. Some brought their idols and, not wanting to offend these people, their idols were placed inside the sanctuary It is said that the Jews looked upon the Kaaba as an outlying tabernacle of the Lord with veneration until it became polluted with idols. In a tribal contention over a well, Zamzam, the treasure of the Kaaba, 
and the offerings that pilgrims had given were dumped down the well, and it was filled with sand, it disappeared. Many years later Abba Muthalad was given visions telling him where to find the well and its treasure. He became the hero of Mecca, and he was destined to become the grandfather of Muhammad. Before this time, Augustine became the Bishop of North Africa, and was effective in winning Arabs to Roman Catholicism, including whole tribes. It was among these Arab converts to Catholicism that the concept of looking for an Arab prophet developed. Muhammad's father died from illness, and sons born to great Arab families in places like Mecca were sent into the desert to be suckled and weaned and spend some of their childhood with Bedouin tribes for training and to avoid the plagues in the cities. After his mother and grandfather also died, Muhammad was with his uncle when a Roman Catholic monk learned of his identity and said, take your brother's son back to his country and guard him against the Jews for by God if they see him and know of him that which I know, they will construe evil against him. Great things are in store for this brother's son of yours. The Roman Catholic monk had fanned the flames for future Jewish persecutions at the hands of the followers of Muhammad. The Vatican desperately wanted Jerusalem because of its religious significance but was blocked by the Jews Another problem was the true Christians in North Africa, who preached the gospel. Roman Catholicism was growing in power but would not tolerate opposition. Somehow the Vatican had to create a weapon to eliminate both the Jews and the true Christian believers who refused to accept Roman Catholicism. Looking to North Africa, they saw the multitudes of Arabs as a source of manpower to do their dirty work. Some Arabs had become Roman Catholic and could be used in reporting information to leaders in Rome. Others were used in the underground spy network to carry out Rome's master plan to control the great multitudes of Arabs who rejected Catholicism. When St. Augustine appeared on the scene, he knew what was going on. His monastery served as bases to seek out and destroy Bible manuscripts owned by the true Christians. The Vatican wanted to create a messiah for the Arabs, someone they could raise up as a great leader, a man with charisma whom they could train and eventually unite all the non-Catholic Arabs behind him creating a mighty army that would ultimately capture Jerusalem for the Pope. In the Vatican briefing, Cardinal B told us this story. A wealthy Arabian lady, who was a faithful follower of the Pope, played a tremendous part in this drama. She was a widow named Khadija. She gave her wealth to the church and retired to a convent, but was given an assignment. She was to find a brilliant young man who could be used by the Vatican to create another religion and become the messiah for the children of Ishmael. Khadija had a cousin named Wei Rakwan who was also a very faithful Roman Catholic and the Vatican placed him in a critical role as Muhammad's advisor. He had tremendous influence on Muhammad. teachers were sent to young Muhammad, and he had intensive training. Muhammad studied the works of St. Augustine which prepared him for his great calling. The Vatican had Catholic Arabs across North Africa spread the story of a great one who was about to rise up among the people and be the chosen one of their God. While Muhammad was being prepared, he was told that his enemies were the Jews and that the only true Christians were Roman Catholic. 
He was taught that others, calling themselves Christians, were actually wicked imposters and should be destroyed. Many Muslims believe this. Muhammad began receiving divine revelations, and his wife's Catholic cousin Wei Rakwan helped interpret them. From this came the Quran. In the fifth year of Muhammad's mission, persecution came against his followers because they refused to worship the idols in the Kaaba. Muhammad instructed some of them to flee to Abyssinia, where Negus, the Roman Catholic king, accepted them because Muhammad's views on the Virgin Mary were so close to Roman Catholic doctrine. These Muslims received protection from Catholic kings because of Muhammad's revelations. Muhammad later conquered Mecca, and the Kaaba was cleared of idols. History proves that before Islam came into existence, the Sabaeans in Arabia worshipped the moon god, who was married to the sun god. They gave birth to three goddesses, who were worshipped throughout the Arab world as daughters of Allah and idol excavated at Hazer, in Palestine, in the 1950s, shows Allah sitting on a throne with the crescent moon on his chest. Muhammad claimed he had a vision from Allah and was told, You are the messenger of Allah. This began his career as a prophet, and he received many messages. By the time Muhammad died, the religion of Islam was exploding. The nomadic Arab tribes were joining forces in the name of Allah and his prophet, Muhammad. Some of Muhammad's writings were placed in the Quran, others were never published. They are now in the hands of high-ranking holy men, ayatollahs, in the Islamic faith. When Cardinal B shared with us in the Vatican, he said, these writings are guarded because they contain information that links the Vatican to the creation of Islam. Both sides have so much information on each other that if exposed, it could create such a scandal that it would be a disaster for both religions. In their holy book, the Quran, Christ is regarded as only a prophet. If the Pope was his representative on earth, then he also must be a prophet of God. This caused the followers of Muhammad to fear and respect the Pope as an other holy man. The Pope moved quickly and issued bulls, granting the Arab generals permission to invade and conquer the nations of North Africa. The Vatican helped to finance the building of these massive Islamic armies in exchange for three favors. 1. Eliminate the Jews and Christians, true believers, which they called infidels. 2 protect the Augustinian monks and Roman Catholics. 3. Conquer Jerusalem for His Holiness in the Vatican. As time went by, the power of Islam became tremendous. Jews and true Christians were slaughtered and Jerusalem fell into their hands. Roman Catholics were never attacked, nor were there shrines, during this time. But when the Pope asked for Jerusalem, he was surprised at their denial. The Arab generals had such military success, that they could not be intimidated by the Pope. Nothing could stand in the way of their own plan. Under Wei Rakwa's direction, Muhammad wrote that Abraham offered Ishmael as a sacrifice. The Bible says that Isaac was the sacrifice, but Muhammad removed Isaac's name and inserted Ishmael's name. As a result of this and Muhammad's vision, the faithful Muslims built a mosque, the Dome of the Rock, in Ishmael's honor, on the site of the Jewish temple that was destroyed in 70 AD. This made Jerusalem the second most holy place in the Islam faith. 
How could they give such a sacred shrine to the Pope without causing a revolt? The Pope realized what they had created was out of control when he heard they were calling His Holiness an infidel. The Muslim generals were determined to conquer the world for Allah and now they turned toward Europe. Islamic ambassadors approached the Pope and asked for papal bulls to give them permission to invade European countries. The Vatican was outraged, war was inevitable. Temporal power and control of the world was considered the basic right of the Pope. He wouldn't think of sharing it with those whom he considered heathens. The Pope raised up his armies and called them crusades to hold back the children of Ishmael from grabbing Catholic Europe. The crusades lasted centuries and Jerusalem slipped out of the Pope's hands. Turkey fell and Spain and Portugal were invaded by Islamic forces. In Portugal, they called a mountain village, Fatima in honor of Muhammad's daughter, never dreaming it would become world famous. Years later when the Muslim armies were poised on the islands of Sardinia and Corsica to invade Italy, there was a serious problem. The Islamic generals realized they were too far extended. It was time for peace talks. One of the negotiators was Francis of Assisi. As a result, the Muslims were allowed to occupy Turkey in a Christian world, and the Catholics were allowed to occupy Lebanon in the Arab world. It was also agreed that the Muslims could build mosques in Catholic countries without interference, as long as Roman Catholicism could flourish in Arab countries. Cardinal V told us in Vatican briefings that both the Muslims and Roman Catholics agreed to block and destroy the efforts of their common enemy. Bible believe in Christian missionaries. Through these concordats, Satan blocked the children of Ishmael from a knowledge of scripture and the truth. A light control was kept on Muslims from the Ayatollah down through the Islamic priests, nuns, and monks. The Vatican also engineers a campaign of hatred between the Muslim Arabs and the Jews. Before this, they had coexisted peacefully. The Islamic community looks on the Bible-believing missionary as a devil who brings poison to the children of Allah. This explains years of ministry in those countries with little results. The next plan was to control Islam. In 1910, Portugal was going socialistic. Red flags were appearing, and the Catholic Church was facing a major problem. Increasing numbers were against the Church. The Jesuits wanted Russia involved, and the location of this vision at Fatima could play a key part in pulling Islam to the Mother Church. In 1917, the Virgin appeared in Fatima, the Mother of God was a smashing success, playing to overflow crowds. As a result, the Socialists of Portugal suffered a major defeat. Roman Catholics worldwide began praying for the conversion of Russia, and the Jesuits invented the Novenas to Fatima, which they could perform throughout North Africa, spreading good public relations to the Muslim world. The Arabs thought they were honoring the daughter of Muhammad, which is what the Jesuits wanted them to believe. As a result of the vision of Fatima, Pope Pius XII ordered his Nazi army to crush Russia and the Orthodox religion and make Russia Roman Catholic. A few years after he lost World War II, Pope Pius XII startled the world with his phony dancing sun vision to keep Fatima in the news. It was great religious showbiz, and the world swallowed it.
Not surprisingly, Pope Pius XII was the only one to see this vision. As a result, a group of followers has grown into a blue army worldwide, totaling millions of faithful Roman Catholics ready to die for the Blessed Virgin. But we haven't seen anything yet. The Jesuits have their Virgin Mary scheduled to appear four or five times in China, Russia, and a major appearance in the Americas. What has this got to do with Islam? Note Bishop Sheen's statement. Our Lady's appearances at Fatima marked the turning point in the history of the world's 350 million Muslims. After the death of his daughter, Muhammad wrote that she is the most holy of all women in paradise next to Mary. He believed that the Virgin Mary chose to be known as Our Lady of Fatima as a sign and a pledge that the Muslims who believe in Jesus Christ virgin birth will come to believe in his divinity. Bishop Sheen pointed out that the pilgrim virgin statues of Our Lady of Fatima were enthusiastically received by Muslims in Africa, India and elsewhere and that many Muslims are now coming into the Roman Catholic Church 